from now, it's time to get started. So, this gonna be in seven steps, all right? So I'm gonna teach y'all how to retire in five years. And if you're really serious about getting your money, stay to the end of this live so you can learn how to get this money, all right? So, I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of background. I, uh, I got rich by the age of 23, but the original goal was to get rich by the age of 32 or 33, one of those years. So we're gonna go over everything in this, um, in this thread, all right? So it's gonna be seven steps. All right, let's get it. So the seven steps, all right? And if you're on YouTube Live, you know to tap in. Let's get it. So step one is to get a side hustle or job. So I'll show you guys real quick. This is step one. Get a hustle or job, all right? So everyone who wants to know what step one is, is this. I don't care if you're 18. I don't care who you are. This is step one, all right? So this is a five-year step. This is a five-year process. Let me know when you tap in, all right? So, all right, step two. So this is step one, period. So it could be uh, whatever it is. I don't care if you work at Walmart, Kroger, but step one is to literally fund your, your living expenses. Step one is income stream one. Everybody needs this. Doesn't matter who you are. And preferably that shit needs to make Minimum twenty five hundred a month, you know, in my opinion, but two thousand is you should be getting paid no less than a thousand a week. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like that should be the goal for a job. But um anything else, it could be seven hundred, five hundred, two thousand, whatever it is, cause that's just income stream one. So two thousand at the minimum, but uh four thousand at standard, all right, that's income stream one. 2000 at minimum, 4000 at standard. So either 500 or $1,000 a week. Everybody should try to make off income stream one, all right? So that's step one. Everybody has to go through this step. If you avoid this step, you're probably, you know, spoiled, rich, something, generational wealth. That's cool. Who gives a crap? So, you know, some people don't have to follow this step. They have family to pass down jobs to them or hustles or streams of income. Some people sell weed uh, for that. Some people, there's plenty of ways to do all of this. And I know there's people who have this, which is one. It's either weed, uh, you know, um, scamming. Um, they do a lot. So that's why I said hustle or job, because I understand there's different ways of getting it. Okay? Let me know when you uh, post that. Oh, it's not. oh, I see it right here. All right, make sure y'all comment and try, all right, if you want to learn. All right, so that's step one. Whatever it is you do, that's step one. All right, small account challenge, tap in. Uh, comment trial if you want to tap in, all right? So I'm going to teach you everything there is, how to turn 2,000, and you know how this go, all right? Comment trial, and if you're in the YouTube, you need to uh, link in the description if you want to get in, all right? So step two, step two. Build capital and a safety net. So this is the second step I took. Okay, so I need we need to be building a, a capital and a safety net. That's step two. All right. So we need to be going ahead and just start for the ten year plan. So I'm going to go to a calculator in a minute and teach you guys how to uh, invest and learn and start your ten year plan. All right. So we're going to go to step two in a minute. So let me uh, let me get that off the screen real quick. But let me go to step three, and let's get a side hustle. But let me take you guys somewhere real quick so you guys could see. Um, all right, let me see. Let me go to this is called investing calculator. So you're going to you're going to uh, type in investing calculator on Google. So let me bring the people on a live to my PowerPoint screen. So you guys see the PowerPoint screen on my live. So investing calculator, we're going to go here and then we're going to go to the one called calculator.net. All right. So this is how you're going to set up your 10 year plan. OK, so starting capital, let's just say you start with zero. All right. So I'm going to teach you guys some simple math. OK, 
So you got to go to calculator.net, right? Everybody should go to calculator.net, and then you should go to this part right here. So I'm going to teach you guys something. This is the calculator that got me rich. If it wasn't for this website and this specific chart, I would not have, and the one on Acorns. So it was Acorns first, and this was the second calculator that got me rich. Because you can literally plan your life out with this calculator right here. This will change your life. So let's just say starting amount is zero. Okay? So starting amount is zero. And let's just say uh, we want 10% every year. So that's a pretty easy amount to get that you don't have to work for, right? So at, I want to contribute this monthly. All right? So I want to contribute... Um, I want to contribute monthly, let's say $400 a month, all right, because I said $1,000, I mean $400, we're going to save $100 every week, so there's 52 weeks in a, in a year, but let's just say every month we deposit $400, right, $400 we deposit every month, okay, so in 10 years at 10% return, if you stick to this plan, this is what you'll get, all right. So after 10 years, you'll have 81K saved up. But, so I said, you know what? Fuck that. That's too much. So I'm going to tell you all the plan that I came up with that got me rich. And it was this exact plan. So I said, I needed about, because I was a good investor, I said I wanted 20% return every year because I'm pretty good at it uh, once I studied and stuff. And my starting amount was, I started with about 5000 All right. So this is what got me rich. I started with five thousand, and then I I deposited three thousand a month. So how did I do that? I had two streams of income. All right. So we're going to go over that. So how did I be able to afford to deposit three k a month? I was living off my army money, and I was investing my barber money. So here was my plan in ten years. I knew I was going to be rich in ten years. I knew I was going to be a millionaire. By the time I was 31, because of this. So if you guys want to know how I knew I was going to be a millionaire, it was this chart right here. Because I had the capital and I had the returns. Okay? And if you go on my Instagram, you'll see that. We can go to my old Instagram if you guys want to for proof. I was making 3 k a month. And this is just how it was. Okay? So let's, let's, let's do a realistic plan. Let's do one of your plans. So let's just say you do $1,000 a month, right? $1,000 a month at 10%. So you need 10% return, all right? And then you start with zero. So let's just say you start at zero, all right? And you will have 200 racks in 10 years, all right? So that's already better then nothing. By the time you're, uh, if you're in your 20s, by the time you're 38, you got this. All you need is $1,000 a month put away. But you probably can't do that. Cool. So let's say you do $400 a month, $100 a week. You'll start there, okay? That's what I recommend starting with, something easy, that no matter how poor you are, you can do these numbers. This is the number everyone can do right here, 81K in savings. And you can do this even with a 5%. You could put this shit in Apple. You know, it, let's just say, let's just say you say fuck it and you want to put it in Apple, right? You put it in a in a high savings Apple account. In 10 years, you'll have just 5% guaranteed. Putting it in an Apple account with 5% or a Robinhood account, just saving. Okay? So that's what you'll make. You'll make that, okay? 62K. So in 10 years, no matter what, you won't be fucked up. At least you'll have 62000 saved. Just putting away $400, $100 every week, right? So you got, to, you got to take the long route first. The reason why I brought out that calculator is because you have to think long term. If you think short term, then you're not going to make a lot of money. So let's go back into the, uh, the rest of the lesson. So I think you guys get my drift now. All right, here we go. Let's get to the HD one. And then let's get back to the PowerPoint. So, let me see where was I. 
So step three. So step one, let's go over, let's go back to step one. Step one was get a side hustle or job. That's step one, okay? Step two, build capital on a safety net. And then step three is to get a side hustle, all right? So this is step three, get a side hustle. So that side hustle for me was cutting hair. So I had a good job, a job that paid me $1,000 a week, and that was the Army. So that was step one. Now I need step two because I have to live good. We all human. We want, we want the basic needs, our car, our this and that. Cool. Step income stream one is straight up for a living. You should not need two income streams to live. All right? Now, for the ones, it's better to do it with a roommate or a girl. If you have a roommate, you can scale faster because you guys can. It's two income streams are better than one. So you need to be splitting the rent with somebody. If you're young, I'm going to be all the way honest with you. That means living with your parents if you have to or living with, you know, get you a, a roommate. It could be your homeboy. Strategize. You get what I'm saying? My See, I, had, I was in the Army, so I had living expenses. Or if you were in college, you need somehow to limit how much it costs to live, period. Okay, with income stream one. So we need to get a side hustle. That could be barbering. That could be Uber. Think about it. All I said was save $100 a week. So there's 52 weeks in the year. You should have 5,200 saved after each year. So in two years, you'll have 10,000 saved. So no matter what you are, if you 18, by the time you 20, you should have 10,000 on you. Why? Because you're putting away $100 a week. So think about it. If you were 18 year old, I don't care if you were 30 year old, you should have 10 bands on you in two years. It's simple as saving $100 a week. And it said, and for all of you saying, well, how can I get that $100 a week? If I'm so broke, drive Uber. I even looked it up. It said it take four hours to make $100 driving Uber on average. So for all of you saying, well, where am I going to get that $100 from, Aristotle? Four hours out of your week to either to do DoorDash or Uber can get you that damn $100. So no excuses, anybody. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I said you can afford to literally save every American. Every single American can afford to save $100 a week. It takes four hours doing Postmate doing uber you can even fucking buy shares in a stock and make a hundred dollars a week you can you could do so much shit to make a hundred dollars a week i don't want to hear it all of you have the opportunity to do it okay so that's so that's so that's step three is to get a side hustle and that side hustle should at minimum make a hundred dollars a week at minimum but i i prefer you to make more Scale that motherfucker. Why stop at four hours? Why not, you know, see if you can save, but this side hustle should be 100% saved, not lived off of, because income stream one is how you live. Income stream two is straight up for savings. You're not touching this side hustle money. This side hustle money is not to live off of. It is to 100%. Have you ever heard the, the, uh, the term by Nipsey Hustle? All money in, that's what all money in means. Income stream two is to be saved 100% into either a high yield savings account or a high yield investing account, okay? So it could be saved into a high yield uh, savings account or a high yield investing account. Apple has 5% guaranteed, but I'm a, I'm a go-getter. I'm a risk taker, baby. I'm 18 years old. I'm motherfucking investing. Fuck that saving shit. 5%, fuck you. I want 10, 20 at minimum, and then I'm aiming for 100 because I'm motherfucking Aristotle, and I deserve 100%. I'm that type of motherfucker. That was me when I was younger. Well, I played a lottery when I can invest and learn this shit for real and really get what I want. So here's the whole point. If we want to get good returns, now we have to learn investing. So now we got to get in the trenches and learn this shit so we can get richer faster. Speed, it's about speed. 5% is way too slow, okay? 5% is way too slow. I'm not going to lie to you. We ain't going to get rich until we 65 
waiting on five percent. Cool, it's good, it's sexy. It's sexy when you're a millionaire. Five percent is real sexy when I'm getting fifty thousand off my one million. But five percent ain't sexy if I'm getting fifty dollars off my, you know, off my one thousand. You get what I'm saying? So fuck that five percent. That ain't gonna get us rich. We need 10 at minimum, 20% aiming for, and then everything else is just cool, okay? So no more excuses, people. Let's get it. So number, let's go to step four. Now we got to live below our means, okay? Limit your shopping, budget for all things. We all deserve a vacation every year, but you might need to take two years, no vacation. It's literally two years of saving can set you up for the rest of your life, okay? Two years of saving. Sacrifices must be made. Sacrifices. That means, okay, all I need to do is save 10000 in two years. Okay? Every American can have 10000 in two years. So that's all I need to do. So whatever is stopping me from doing that has to go. That means if I'm a drug addict, I have to cut that shit off because all I needed to do is stay down for two years. If I'm a... Uh, if I, if I'm, whatever you keep spending your money on, I club too much. I'm trying to look, I spend too much on clothes. Whatever is prohibiting you from saving as much money as possible within these two years, it has to go. And I want you to save more than 10000 Because what you're going to do is, after about six months of saving, you're going to want to keep doing it. You're going to become a saving addict. So you got to get addicted to saving. There is no reason you should be living in check to check uh, because you got to think this shit is too easy. It's about cutting something off. Something can give so you can save a hundred to two hundred dollars a week. Something got to give. I don't care who you are, what you are, what you do. Something has to give. Okay. There is no reason you should be at zero after every check. Okay. So that's, so that's number two. All right, so let's go to step three. Let's go to step four, all right? So that's get in the study trenches. So now this is the part that no one wants to do. This is the part you motherfuckers forget. The moment you graduate high school, the moment you think you're an adult, some of you don't ever grow. I know some 40-year-olds who haven't learned shit since high school who haven't picked up a book since high school and think they got all the fucking knowledge in the world. You're not done learning. How many of you know 40-year-olds who think they know every fucking thing, but you know for a fact they ain't read no book other than the Bible at church? That's it. That's about the only book they pick up. That's it. I know some people who ain't read shit but the Bible for the last 40 years. Just, just standing still. You get what I'm saying? Don't do that. Pick up financial literacy books. You can read the Bible. I'm not saying do that. But please adapt. Adapt. Learn something. This is how you learn fast, though. I'm going to give you guys the, the, the quick way to learn. Reading while either cooking or working out. So, ladies, you need to be listening to audio books while you're cooking or cleaning the house. No offense. I'm just saying, you know, for the... And then, men, you need to be listening to audio books while you're driving to work. You need to be listening, and women too, while you're driving to work too, for the working ladies. Read audio books on your commute to work. Read audio books while you're working out. Listen to it while you're doing something that takes up an hour of your time. So whoever knows that you either have to commute an hour, work out an hour, um, drive an hour, whatever you have to do, you need to be listening to audio books. It's going to kill time because you got to think if if. Think, you, think about it. You already an American. You crushed on time. You got to work all these hours to make money. So reading, you could you can knock out with audio. So let me explain how. Okay. So think of this is why I say audio books are the best. Because think about it. To read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it takes five hours. It's a five hour read on the audio book. So think about it. You can read that in five days at work. Five, five days, you driving an hour to work, you can read a whole book that's talking about finance. That's why I, I got to audio because I said, oh, shit, this shit saving me time. I just read 48 Laws of Power while I cut my hair. It take an hour. So I cut my hair every week. I read 48 Laws of Power after 
five haircuts. You get what I'm saying? Or in a day, whatever you're doing. So that's what I'm saying. It takes two hours to read an audio book. So why not listen to that shit while you're doing something for those hours? So that's so that's the hack I use to get myself financially literate fast as fuck. I was listening to audio books and it was saving me time. And I was doing it while I work out. I was doing it while I was driving. And I, and I said, the hell with music. I listen to music cause so and then I learned to pull back from music because it gives me more an appreciation for music. Cause you know how you always listen to music and it burns out? Give yourself the the audio books. Trust me. Trust me on this. It changed my life. It made it to where I could learn so fast because I'm learning in five days. Whereas that book, I would have procrastinated on it. I would have got mad because I put the book down, something. So I read uh, Think and Grow Rich in, in four days. I read uh, 48 Laws of Power in five days. Listen to it in five days. I listened to um, so, uh, Substance Art of Not Giving a Fuck, Contagious. I listened to uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That one was the most best experience ever. And then you're going to start writing notes while you work out or pause. You're going to be like, ooh, that was a bar. You're going to pause that motherfucker. You're going to be like, ooh, that was a bar. You feel me? That shit was a bar. All right? So so for all of you who really trying to get this money, if you real, you feel me. If you not and you trying to roast and do all that, that's on you. But for the ones who trying to get money, listen up. You feel me? So now you got to you reading audio books, you working out, you YouTube, and you trying it. You putting in effort. All right? So that's, that's step number uh, five. Step number five is trying this shit for real. Okay? So that's step number five. Try it to the, the, apply the things you read. So soon after you read about 10 audio books, you need to take a break. Let me tell you why. Because you need to be writing down notes and it's time to go apply what you just learned. You feel me? So after you write down them notes, it's time to take a, you need a good 10 audio books and then it's time to take a break. Okay? So you done spent a month learning. It's going to be a lot of information. You read about 10 audio books in a month, you like, holy shit. All right, time to take a break. It's time to go apply all these notes. And I need you to be writing down notes while you read, okay? So now it's time to go apply these notes. But you're going to need a little bit more research on these notes. So in Think or Grow Rich, you're going to hear a lot of uh, gems. In Four Day Laws of Power, you're going to hear some gems. In Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you're going to hear some gems, right? So you're going to hear about all types of shit, credit. So now you got to write down learn credit. See, that's what I did. I wrote down everything I don't know cut by listening to what I'm missing. So you got to listen to rich people because you don't even know what you don't know. So now you got to go find out what you don't know. And you don't know that you need credit. You don't know that you could go and get a credit card. You don't know that you can apply for business credit. You don't know that you could uh, write an audio book with AI. You don't know that you could invest your money on Robinhood app this simple. You don't know to go open up a bank account. You don't know the LLC. You don't know all this shit, right? Because you you just coming in. Your, your parents didn't teach you this shit. School didn't teach you this shit. So it's not your fault. So you got to go know. You got to go learn what you don't know. And you don't know a lot of shit. I swear. I swear you don't. You don't know how. To, if you don't got your LLC, if you don't got damn got a credit card, if you don't got business credit, if you don't got a uh, uh, real estate, all this stuff, then there's a lot of shit you don't know. You get what I'm saying? So you got to go learn every single thing you don't know. But you got to learn what it is you don't know. And I just told you, it's credit. You got to know how to build credit. There's phases to credit. There's three credit bureaus. You get what I'm saying? Trans, whatever, Equifax, and whatever else that shit is, right? And then business credit. It's not ran on the same you know, it's not, it doesn't track your personal. It's business credit. You got to go get your Dunn's number. You get what I'm saying? If you don't know the lingo I'm speaking, then you are already out the loop. You got to learn how to set yourself up a merchant account, a website. You get what I'm saying? You got to learn, you got to learn taxes. You got to learn how to get a CPA. Then you got to learn how to negotiate. Because when you start trying to negotiate deals, people going to hit you with this price then you got to not be a bitch and tell them that price. So now you got to learn human psychology too. 
And then if you got a business, you got to learn human resources because a lot of people suck at business because they don't know how to treat people. Then you got to learn. You get what I'm saying? You got to learn all this shit. Then you got to learn scaling. Then, then you got to learn. Oh, man, you got to learn so much shit. It's so much shit. So read those audio books because it'll help you understand what you don't know. And then you're going to start learning what rich rich people really are transparent. It just it's in the book. Think about it, folks. How can somebody tell you something in just 30 minutes or five minutes? Y'all think a motherfucker just got a secret like this? No, it's a lot to getting rich. It's balance. It's self-love. It's motherfucking all this shit that you're not being said or taught. You get what I'm saying? So it's a lot of shit that gets it goes to getting rich that's not talked about. And then the generational wealth aspect. Why do you think men who have families get more money than single men? Why is it that statistically men with money, men with families hustle harder than single men? Because there's less distractions. You get what I'm saying? It's it's also purposeful. You get what I'm saying? See, when you when you when when you don't have children, family, there's really no reason to even want to make that much money. You're gonna always live check to check if it's a selfish mindset. Even if you're not hustling for your family, you're gonna always live check to check because you don't have a purpose. You like, what am I saving for? What am I? I, I don't care. You when you don't care or have purpose. You're not going. That's why I make a lot of money because I got real shit. I actually want to take my family to every Falcon game. I don't. If me and my son like the Falcons, we should be able to go see it. If my son saw some shit on the internet and and he said, "Dad, damn, Dad, I wish I can go there. Why the fuck we can't?" You get what I'm saying? You got to think like that. That's the mindset first. Everything I should think about or see, I should be able to go touch. That's my mindset. So that is why I decided to get rich because I knew that I wanted to physically touch anything I ever saw. If I saw a Ferrari, I need to drive that motherfucker. If I saw a mansion, why I can't live in it? If I saw a mother, if I saw somebody take a vacation and he was swinging on that fucking hammock, why that ain't me? If I saw palm trees in that video, I need to go see it. I heard of Hawaii. I saw them girls hula dancing. I had to go see that shit. I heard of Africa. I seen them dancing, so I had to go dance in the village myself. That's why I go get money for, for experiences. For experiences. I saw somebody at a five-star hotel. I used to see that Atlantis commercial my whole life in Bahamas. And I said, I'm going to stay at that motherfucker one day. You feel me? That's the mindset you got to have. When I saw that, when I saw that little white kid slide down that slide, that commercial at Bahamas, I said, motherfucker, I'm going to slide down that slide one day. Fuck that shit. That's, that's, that's the attitude first. I'm going to slide down that motherfucking long ass slide in Bahamas one day. That's what I told myself. That is the key to life, traveling, creating memories. And then, you know what I told myself, man, I need another, I need a child. Because I'm so lit, I'm living so good, I can't be selfish. I got to put another motherfucker just like me and recreate myself so I live forever. So now a whole bunch of Aristotles going to be sliding, going to be creating dreams and, and looking at shit and saying, I got to go do that. I got to go do that. I got to go do that. That's why you get rich, folks. To do this shit. Don't be a person just stuck in your hometown. Experiencing life. This earth is so big, and all you want to do is, is sit in Alabama, New York, wherever you are. If you've never been outside your place and you've never seen outside your country, you're wrong. The earth is so big, and you want to die not seeing that shit? Man, that should have changed your life. Traveling is the key to life. I swear to God, I cannot make this up. Once you travel and fuck that cruise shit, you get enough money to spend a week there. If you get an opportunity, it's going to make you want money forever. It's going to make you want money where you can't even not live without money. A person who hasn't traveled will never understand why they need money. A person who never took a vacation will never understand why they don't need money. Like I got some folks who in the country 
who just can't understand. Some niggas in the hood who just can't understand because he never took a vacation. So that's why he's so ignorant. That nigga don't know why he need to stop that drug dealing, stealing, all that shit. He don't know. And even if he doing that, he got to go take a trip, man. Treat yourself once and I swear your ass going to want to get money for the rest of your life. You feel me? So let's keep going. Let's keep going. So number uh, six, start investing. Open a broker's account. Hurry. Time is valuable. Mentorship. Hurry. Join a stock group. Hurry. So you need to save yourself time. So for all of you like Aristotle, I ain't paying you for none of your courses, mentorship, this and that. I'm like, okay, then, then go ahead and waste three years of your life learning investing when I can teach you in the next week. You get what I'm saying? So you're going to spend three years avoiding me when I can teach you in a week and I can save you time when the whole goal is to get rich fast. I save you time. You don't don't look at me like, oh, fuck me. Cool. But I save you time, though. And I put that on everything. I will save you time. And you know I will. So comment trial. Comment trial. If you really trying to stop bullshitting and learn this shit quickly, get this shit out the way. And, and you know what I'm saying? So you'll have this shit instead of taking that three year stretch trying to avoid me. You get what I'm saying? You're going to try to avoid me for the next three years. That's how long it's going to take you if you don't fuck with me. It's going to take you three years. And if you go to somebody else, it's going to take you even longer. When you know I'm the person who got the answers, I'm the one with the most testimonials, I'm the one who's helping all these people, I'm the one who niggas copying. So don't avoid me. Come in trial, come in my group, save yourself time, and if you uh and if you want uh YouTube, click the link in the bio. Click the link in the description. Cause I'ma save you time. You you wanna take three years or you wanna learn this shit in a week? It's thirty-five dollars. I ain't even trying to hurt your pockets. That's another thing, too. I ain't even be hitting you over the head. I'm saying, look, bro, I'm going to save you time. You just give me a little something. I don't want to get this shit away for free because it's, it's my intellectual property. And I'm also not about to hit you over the head like everybody else. You're going to go somewhere else. You're going to spend 5000 for something I'm going to give you for 35 Make sure y'all uh, click the link in the description. All right? That's all I'm trying to say. I'm here to save everybody time because time is precious. Are you trying to get rich by, by if you 30, are you trying to get rich by 33? If you 20, are you trying to get rich by 23? Are you trying to take three years like it took me? If you try to learn this shit on your own, it's going to take three years. I swear to God on everything. If you try to learn investing on your own and try to avoid me, it's going to take three years. Three years minimum. So if you don't want to put in three years, Fuck with me. I'll teach you in three weeks. How about that? Let me save you time. So let's go to the next part. All right? All right? If you're trying to get rich fast way, let's get to it. So step seven. So let's go over it. Let's go back to the calculator. So let me explain why it's going to take you. You're going to get rich in five years instead of 10. So let's go back to that calculator of ours where I explained to you where you're going to take a 10-year stretch, but somehow, some way, you're going to figure it out in five, okay? So, so our monthly thing went from 400 but when you start cutting back on your expenses, when you start doing everything I said, you're going to start making money, okay? Let me tell you why, because you're going to try to beat that time. So soon, this shit is going, it's going to become a game to you. So soon, you're going to be like, all right, I can save 800 I know I said 400, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit more money. I'm getting wiser. I done read books. I done, I done got my money up and my return on investment getting bigger. So I'm making a 10% on my money. You get what I'm saying? So now I'm a deposit in 800 a month. And holy shit, in 10 years, I got 163K, right? So next thing you know, you're going to be doing, you're going to be going from 400 and then you're going to be like, you know what? I'm better than that. Oh, shit. Let me put this in the real uh, thing for the YouTube viewers. My fault. Let me show that again for the YouTube viewers. All right. Let me do that again. So for the YouTube viewers, remember what I said. You're going to be, you're going you gonna to start trying to double that shit. You're going to start with a 400, right? At 10%. But then you're going to be like, you know what? I'm doing pretty well. I, I think I can get richer than this. You're going to start trying to beat your time. 
And then you're going to be like, okay, fuck that. Let me put in 800. You're going to say, I'm going to try to put in 800 monthly. So the goal is you're going to say after 10 years, I need 10% return. Monthly, I'm contributing 800. And then let's see what we get, right? So we get that. We get 163 racks. And then soon, in about three years, you're going to be able to deposit 1600 I kid you not. At about year three, you went, so year one, you're going to be at 400 a month depositing. Year two, you're going to be at 800 because you're like, okay, man, fuck it. I could do more. And then year three or year four, you're going to be like, oh, shit. I done cut back on expenses. I'm still learning. I'm growing. Year three, you getting, you, you depositing 1600 a month. And then now you're on track in 10 years to make 300 racks. You see what I'm saying? So, so now you on track to make 300 racks in, in 10 years. So now you ain't going to be no millionaire, but you ain't going to be fucked up. You get what I'm saying? You ain't going to be a millionaire yet, but you ain't going to be fucked up. Okay? So, so boom. Now I'm like, okay, cool. In, three, in 10 years, if I deposit $1,600 a month with only a 10% 10 return annually, I'll literally have this in 10 years. Just 10%, folks. That is easy numbers in the stock market. 10% return is so easy. So now off $1,600 a month. So boom, you're going to be like, oh shit, by year five, you're going to be like, man, I got 3 k a month to save. Fuck you talking about. Year five, you're going to be like, man, I'm putting in 3 k a month now. And then now you on track. You're by year five. So that's how you become a millionaire fast. You see what I'm saying? So then, now you got about, by the time, so now you're going to have about 200 racks on you, 300 racks. You're going to have them racks on you, right? So because you done took my, my steps, right? So you're depositing money and you're increasing your savings as you deposit. You're increasing your streams of income. You got two streams of income. You got one income stream that you're living off of, which could be a job, and then side hustle which could be Uber or anything else that you're investing. And you're throwing 100% of that Uber money, that barber money, that hair money. Ladies, if you're a hairstylist, be a hairstylist on the side, get you another job, live off that job. But it is going to take two to three years of having two jobs. You get what I'm saying? I'm not going to lie to you. That's I had to do it. You got to do it too. So I'm telling you, that's the plan. That's the goal. You can get rich. You can have a, a half a million on you in ten, in 10 years. It don't take a lifetime to have a half a M on you. They telling us to wait 65 till we millionaires. I'm telling you, you can have a fucking a half a million on you in 10 years. You get what I'm saying? On some real shit with just saving $500, $800, getting 10% return on, back on your trading. You get what I'm saying? So why the fuck should we wait 65 for an M when we can wait, if I'm 35, I can have that bitch when I'm 45. If I'm goddamn 23, I can have that bitch when I'm 33. We can retire earlier, younger, through investing, through side hustles, through multiple streams of income. You feel me? So I'm telling y'all, this shit is not hard. It's just that you don't have financial literacy. You get what I'm saying? I do. It's not hard. They just trying to make it hard for us so we can be in this rat race because they don't want us working. They don't they want us to be workers in society. That's why the only way to beat inflation is investing, investing. If you want to know how to beat inflation, you're not going to beat it with a nine to five. The government will never be fair. If he if he increases minimum wage, he's going to increase motherfucking uh, taxes. He's going to increase the, the, the rent. You know, as your wages increase, people, they increase everything else. So we cannot beat inflation. We can't beat it. We can't beat the government. If he's, he's going to keep the middle class right here. And every time he raised the bar, the more you guys complain and they raise the bar, he's just going to raise all the prices to where you're still back at square one. Think about it, folks. If you make $25 an hour, but everything is $50, you're not really saving. You get what I'm saying? So we need to learn investing. That is why investing, real estate uh, assets are important. Trading assets, no matter what you are doing, is important. 
your intellectual property, whether you're talented, whether you're doing something, you need to be having a talent, a side hustle, or income stream, or the world will eat you alive. Okay? So, how did I learn all of this? Why, why did God put all of this information into a 23-year-old black man, 21-year-old black man? Why am I so wise? Because I didn't watch TV for seven years. I studied. I went to college. I think I had my doctorate in financial literacy. Like, a financial advisor couldn't fuck with me. Like, a, a certified financial advisor ain't got shit on me. I, I put... I, I literally could go to any household and turn up their income better. Like, I should really be a financial advisor. I've studied growth because because I did it, because I became a millionaire, I can teach them how to do it. See, a financial advisor make the same money as a motherfucker they teaching. You get what I'm saying? Like, how you going to advise this person and you're, you don't have a million dollars? This person trying to get rich listening to a fucking a $50,000 nigga. You get what I'm saying? Y'all listen to $50,000 niggas tell y'all about how to make a million. They can't. No, you know who can? Me. Because I did it. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm being honest with you. I'm being honest with you. You feel me? Like, like I'm just keeping it all the way 1,000. I can't listen to my neighbor about how to get rich. I'm going to listen to that boy in the mansion. Why would I listen to my neighbor and we both got Nissans? If, if, if I, if, why, okay, if you really want to listen to a financial advisor, go outside, see what he's driving. If he ain't driving a G Wagon, a motherfucking Rolls Royce, a, a motherfucking uh, Ferrari, a, a Lambo, uh, uh, even a Tesla, a, a Tesla Model X, if he ain't driving those, those five, I ain't trying to hear what the fuck he's saying. I'm being honest with you. I'll, I'll take a Shelby Mustang at minimum, a Camaro ZL1. That motherfucking car better be 70K or above. Me to even listen to what you talking about. And I don't want to hear it. Don't be materialistic. You got to show me something before I can even take bruh serious you, or something. I need to see a, a real presidential Rolex. I'm being honest. Or, or a bank account, a statement, a bank statement. Even, okay, let's say you low key. Cool. You low-key. You don't do all that. Nigga, show me an account, an investing account with, with them M's in it then. Since you want to be Mr. Low-Key, show me something. I'm being honest. For me to listen, I got to see something. Even if you not on that high-key shit, cool. Low-key, show me some shit then. Show me something. I need proof. You get what I'm saying? Or, or whatever you talking about is cap. Whatever you talking about is cap. If you can't show me an account with, with, with 50K in it, then you not talking to me about money. If you can't show me, you get what I'm saying, like something. You can't show me a motherfucking no motion, no nothing, no lifestyle I want to see. I can't listen to it. So you know who I listen to? The motherfuckers who was doing what I, wanted, what I said I wanted to do. I wanted to make money without rap or ball because I knew I, ain't, I don't want to do any. I don't want to do neither. So I said, I got to go find me somebody who makes money without rap or ball. There's a reason why rappers and ball players fall out with the people that they went to high school with. Ja Morant can't teach these niggas how to dribble a ball. They trying to tell him to put him on. He like, nigga, I fucking shoot. I dunk. What do you want me to say to you? You get what I'm saying? Like, like. You can't, y'all be trying to get information from people who don't even do what you're trying to do. You get what I'm saying? If you want to literally do it right, you got to talk to somebody who's doing it right. The way you trying to do it. So if you're trying to be a truck driver, don't talk to John Morant. If, you, if you're trying to be a fucking uh, whatever you are, talk to the people who's doing what you said you're trying to do. You guys will go talk to your auntie and say, auntie, should I try investing? Does your fucking auntie invest? Does your uncle invest? 
No. So why are you talking to them? Is he successful at it? No. So talk to somebody who's successful at what you're doing and you will be successful. It's simple. It's the simple formula. Stop talking to people who aren't successful at what they're doing and can't show proof. You get what I'm saying? You you asking your auntie for marriage advice, she's the she's divorced and 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 or or whatever. Not even not even a divorce part. Can't find a man, can't get a man to stay. But she cute enough to get nutted in, but you keep going to her about about relationship advice. You listen to people on a podcast who not even married about relationship advice. You listening to men who not even millionaires about becoming a millionaire. You get what I'm saying? Stop it. Listen to the people who are actually doing what you say you're trying to do. Whatever I'm trying to do, you got I got to vet the person I'm getting the information from. That's why I stopped telling people my goals because when I was in the army, I realized we're all fucking blind. When I had a 9 to 5, I realized I'm talking to my coworker about getting money. I'm wasting my fucking time. We both waiting on each other. Hey, bro, you want to go learn this shit? Like, y'all, then y'all go to trying to do shit with another person. Stop that shit, too. Learn investing on your own. Stop waiting on motherfuckers. Stop waiting on your wife, too. You don't have to wait on your wife to learn shit. Ladies, you don't have to wait on your husband to learn shit. If you want to learn something, unless that motherfucker going to snatch the book out your hand, you better do it. All this, oh, trying to wait on the next person. Well, I was about to try to learn investing, but my homeboy said he didn't want to do it. So I ain't going to do it. I done heard somebody say that shit. And then I done heard another man say, bro, I was waiting on you to teach me. You waiting on me to teach you? Nigga, here's the course. Oh, you think this millionaire about to motherfucking, do you know, you say, look, I learned the way you supposed to learn. I learned from reading books. From this, from studying, from this. So if you want to waste my time, you either got to pay up or take my mentorship or course. But one thing I'm not about to do is spend time for free. What What's in it for me? What's in it for me? This ain't this shit. This shit ain't no motherfucking charity work. I got time is money. If I'm going to waste time, I'm going to waste it on my family, my wife and my children and my coworkers, I'm a any time I'm a waste gonna be on the people who deserve that time, and that's my coworkers, that's my wife, that's my children, that's my close friends, that's my mom, that's my father, that's my family. All time wasted goes to people who deserve that shit. So for anybody who think I'm about to teach you for free, fuck you when you and you're wrong. I ain't gonna say fuck you. Sorry, you're wrong. Hey, no cap, this nigga the GOAT, though. I just followed two days ago. No, bro, no. I'm on live. Stop. Stop. I'm on live. Bro, what's going off? Damn, yeah, hold up. But nah, man. No, we don't do this shit for free. God damn it. That is disrespectful to my time. And then I've had people who literally thought I was going to waste time when they don't realize there are people who are more important than you in line for this time. So whenever you see somebody who is important, who doesn't want to waste time on you, that's because they understand that time is, is precious. And any time I'm a waste, got to be on somebody who is important, who deserves it. I'm going to go spend time with my employees. I'm going to go spend time with my wife. I'm going to spend time with my kids. Because I barely get that time. You get what I'm saying? I don't get enough time to, you get what I'm saying, like just waste on random friendships. I don't get enough time to waste on, I got I to run this company. I got I to gotta build generational wealth. So the time I spend with people, if it's outside of the people I care about, who I'm getting money with, it better be about some money. And if it ain't about some money, we better have a good ass time. Don't waste my fucking time. Motherfucker, we better have, it better be a lit ass party. It, that's how you can network with Aristotle. I'm with that party and shit. 
If you know where the party at, hey, where the party at, hey, we can start there, motherfucker. Where the lit parties? Is all my girls in the money? And my shit right there. I'ma tell you how to network with Aristotle. Motherfucker, it better be a lit party with a whole bunch of motherfuckers who getting money. We can start there. Who got the party? If you on this live and you got the motherfucking party, DM me. DM me, motherfucker, because I'm with that shit. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. That's my shit right there. I'm a, I'm a party. I, I like the party now. Can't lie to you. I'm with all that shit. But I like exclusive get money parties. Boy, like to powder. Boy, you got me fucked up. That's you. These niggas always trying to put they put they woes on me. Do you see my motherfucking chink see my cheeks seeking in and all that shit? Or do you see me touching my nose every two seconds? Nigga, play with yourself, nigga. What what young doll say? Play with me. I mean, play with your bitch, nigga, or something like that. Don't play with me. Play with your bitch. Yeah. These motherfuckers try to instill what they do on me. No sir. That ain't what we own, my brother. Gotta have purpose. Yeah, I got plenty of purpose though, man. But nah, man, we had a good time on this live. I'm I'm so happy. You know. But I'm gonna be honest with y'all, man. Like, find you a good five people and just be happy with them. Don't chase niggas. Don't chase. You know, you can come around, you you know, do what you gotta do, but don't don't chase. Have fun. Um life is good. If you really wanna learn from me. I'm going to fuck with you. I'm going to teach you this. That's all I got to say. And I'm the best to do it. I got the most testimonials. I got the best program out. Um, and, yeah, happy as hell to be here thanking God for life. Every day I wake up, I thank God for it. I'm going to be honest with you. Like, every day I live is like a, a blessing. Like, and I'm going to be honest with you, man. Like, for all you people feeling suicidal, don't don't feel that way. Um you going to die one day, so just be patient. You don't even got to end that shit yourself. Life going to happen to you. Just be patient with life, man. And if you and if you, and if you you feeling some type of way, move out of that area. I'm going to be honest with you, folks. Like, the best, the, big, the best thing I could have did for myself was move when I didn't feel like I was valued in the place that I'm in. Most people are suicidal because they don't feel valued in the place that they're in, in society. So when they feel like no one cares and they don't have value in their area that they're in around these same 10 people, because really all they want to do is, is fucking, they want 10 people to act right. Whenever somebody is feeling suicidal, they want 10 people to accept them in like five to 10 people. They're mad because they're not accepted by the five to 10 people. So what you got to do is you got to move away and find five more people to give a fuck about. That's the honest truth. Just move away. America is so big. This ain't Africa where you can't go to the next country. America, if I feel like shit in Georgia, I can move to Savannah. I could move to California. I could move to Florida. I could move somewhere. If, I'm, if I feel va undervalued or I feel like shit, just start over. I'm telling you, that's the, that's the one key to life. For everybody who feels suicidal and feel like they fucked up, move. If you feel like you fucked up where you are, because that could happen. You probably got your ass beat on camera. You probably got embarrassed in the neighborhood. You probably, your wife done left you. Your best friend done fucked your bitch. And the whole neighborhood found out, uh... It's some shit that happens. You get what I'm saying? And the only way to really cope with that shit, you can't do it living there. If, you, if you're traumatized somewhere, you can't get over trauma in the area where the traumatic experiences happen. How can I get over trauma of some hood shit and I'm still in the hood? How can I get over trauma of embarrassment when I'm still around the people who embarrass me? How can I get over the trauma of this when I'm still around the shit that got me there. You get what I'm saying? 
So people don't realize the reason why you got to move is because you won't ever be able to get over trauma. You can't, you know what I'm saying? And where it happened. So if something happened to you, you have to move. Okay? You have to. So that's step one is get the fuck out. That's why I didn't I got out of Atlanta because at one point, not because a trauma happened to me, but what what happened to me was I was way too socially unaccepted in Atlanta during in the high school phase. So let's let me be honest and transparent with you. Atlanta was a city of black wealth. So my parents were my dad was poor and my mother was poor. So the reason why Aristotle was such a hustler is because my father and mother, my father didn't have a job and my mother didn't have a job when I was in high school. So I'm in a city where you have to have the latest J's, you have to have the polo, you have to have the Nike, you got to have the new King Griffey's that came out, you got to have the new J's, you got to have the Hollister, the, all that shit, right? So... It was kind of hard when your parents when your parents don't spoil you in Atlanta, living in Atlanta, when you not you, you won't be able to be socially accepted, not being fresh as fuck. So I hustled hard as fuck. That was me. I was that motherfucker who was go get it because I had to be fresh. And I knew that my parents didn't have money for me to be fresh. You get what I'm saying? So I was like, shit, I got to hustle. So I've, I've been hustling since high school. I've been getting money since high school. I've been getting money on a hustle tip since the seventh grade. Like I turned ten dollars into like like two thousand when I was like a, a twelve years old. I turned um, what was it? I turned one hundred dollars into what was that shit on eBay? I remember I did that shit. I'm gonna tell y'all how I turned one hundred dollars into about like 3,000 on eBay. So this is what I did. But it was luck. You know, we in high school, I'm living in Kansas. So niggas don't really know the value of sneakers, right? So I bought a pair of Bread 11 Jordans from a guy in high school who just said he's tired of them. He was like, I don't want my breads no more, man. I want, I, I'm done with these shoes. Anybody want them? I'm like, hell yeah. Cause you know he he not watching stock yet stock he don't know shoes cause I'm in Kansas so these niggas like they don't think of shoes like we did in Atlanta so this nigga sell me the shoes for a hundred the bread elevens I flipped them shits on eBay for four four forty then I just bought some more shoes with that same money I just kept flipping the same money after that one hundred dollars and that shit turned to three thousand cause Kansas I could just go stand in line buy the Jordans, and somebody in New York will buy them because it's sold out in New York. So I just kept selling my shoes. Every every shoe I bought sold. And I flipped $100 into 3 k when I was 16 years old. No, 17. 17. But anyways, I'm going to get off this live. This shit been like an hour or 58 minutes. God bless y'all. I went crazy. Comment trial if you're trying to learn from me. And if you're on YouTube, link in the description to get in. I will save you time. If you don't learn investing from me, it'll take three years. I could teach you in the next three weeks. Okay? So comment trial. I'm about to get off this live. They about to kick me off because I've been on for an hour. But it's all good. God bless y'all. I had fun on this live. It was a good live. I'm going to save this. You can watch the replay on YouTube or you can watch the replay on my Instagram live. Try to watch it on YouTube, though. Go support my YouTube, please. I love y'all. Um, and it's the outro, man. Comment trial. Link in my bio. If you can't comment trial and you miss out, I will save you time. I'll teach you quickly for 35. Tap in with me. Y'all tap in with me, too, on YouTube. Link in the description. Thank you guys so much. Aristotle, I want to bow. Fuck it. I put on a good performance. Bow down. Thank you guys so much. Bow down. Thank you guys for attending. Thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right.